Bengaluru is in the midst of a crisis. The city is suffering from acute water shortage. Bengaluru needs between 2,600 and 3,000 million litres of water per day. The city gets 1,460 million litres of water from the Kaveri supply and 1,392 million litres of water from the bore wells. And according to a recent quote from the Chief Minister, the city is short 500 million litres of water per day. As summer peaks earlier than usual and the drought-like situation in the state intensifies, the Karnataka government has issued advisories capping the rate of water tankers, taking control of private water tankers and has even prohibited the use of Kaveri water and borewell water for rain dances and other celebrations during Holi. All of these measures are what you would expect in a situation like this. And while Bengaluru waits for the monsoon and subsequently attempts to harvest rain water, there's one more option that isn't spoken of enough, treated water. As residents of Bengaluru and even elsewhere in India where the situation might not be too different as the summer advances, let's ask ourselves, what happens when we flush the toilet? Where does the waste go? Where does the water go? And more importantly, can this water be treated in order to solve this crisis that we are undergoing right now? In order to find answers to these questions, I reached out to the Bengaluru Water Supply and Sewerage Board. The BWSSB operates 33 sewage treatment plants across Bengaluru. Each one collects sewage from the surrounding areas, processes the sewage into clean water. Some of the STPs are filling lakes, that's recharge of groundwater. When STPs fill lakes, they make available groundwater and therefore they don't allow bore wells to dry up. So the cycle is this, that water comes from the Kaveri, is consumed in our homes, apartments. We also take water from bore wells, it flows to STPs. They're treated in the STP, goes through a constructed wetland and fills the lakes. The lake is kept full, it recharges the aquifer, it first recharges the shallow aquifer, eventually it drifts down to the deep aquifer, tapped through small open wells and tapped through bore wells, it comes back to our homes and then it happens. In addition, there are some STPs which are being used directly by industries. Like the Yalanka STP, which is now currently treating about 6 to 7 MLD, that water is going to the international airport, to BEL and ITC. The 15 MLD plant at Jagkur is promised for the power plant which is coming up at Yalahanka and so on. So there are direct industrial consum uh, consumption and there is indirect use for the city through filling up lakes and recharging aquifers. But to do all that, the waste must be treated. This is the Vrishabhavati Valley Sewage Treatment Plant. TV tower, Vijayanagara, Chandra Layout, Basungode, all the Kanakpura road are covered in this valley. This is the first time we have to cover this valley. This is the first time we have to cover this once the sewage reaches here, it is sent through two coarse screens. One removes all particles between 40 mm and 20 mm and the other removes all particles below 20 mm. After this, the sewage goes to the terminal sewage pumping station or the TSPS which pumps the sewage into the grid chamber. The grid chamber contains a fine screen that sieves out particles that are below 5 mm. All of the sand and soil particles accumulated here are used in landfills. After the grid chamber, the sewage goes into the primary clarifier, where all the remaining suspended particles are cleared. This is the last step in primary treatment. The next stage in the treatment of sewage happens in the bioreactor. The bioreactor contains five chambers, the anaerobic chamber, anoxic chamber, the aeration tank, the post-anoxic tank and the post-aeration tank. We can say bioreactor is the heart of the STP. Here we have five cycles. I cycle is the first one, anaerobic cycle. Anaerobic cycle is phosphorus will be removed. Anaerobic cycle, we won't supply the air. It contains some uh, bacteria. It will remove the phosphates, phosphorus. Uh, then it will be anoxic zone. Anoxic zone only nitrous and nitrogen will be removed. This is also in absence of air. We won't supply the air in anoxic and anaerobic. Then it will go to aeration zone. Aeration only we will supply the air. Uh, due to supply of air, BOD and COD will be digested. BOD means bio oxygen chemical demand, COD chemical oxygen demand. This will get digested. Then whatever the left out will be, then it will go to pre anoxic. Whichever, whatever digested like phosphorus nitrates will be digested in the pre-anoxic. Next, pre-aeration zone. 
whichever is left out viewed cod it will be fully digested at the fifth stage a small percentage of the solid waste from the bioreactor is used as activated bacteria in the operation of the same sewage treatment plant the treated water from the bioreactor is sent to a distribution chamber which in turn divides the fluid towards the secondary clarifiers these clarifiers all perform the same function they spin the liquid slowly so that all solid particles settle at the bottom this is known as sludge sludge is thickened and processed to generate energy which is then used to run the same plant the solids remaining at the end of this process of energy generation are sent off to be used as manure in agricultural production From the secondary clarifier the water goes into the disk cloth filter. This chamber contains fine cloth media which filters out suspended solids and releases clean water. This water then goes into a chlorine contact tank in which chlorine is added as a disinfectant. Chlorine kills all infectious microorganisms. This water is then sent off to recharge nearby lakes and to be used by construction companies and other industries. Some of the uh, treated water has been used to fill up the lakes. nine lake, lake we are filling this treated water and we are giving this water to the uh, arvind mills industries and some of the construction companies are buying the water from us and for garden purpose non potable purpose we are using this treated water in belandur uh, called uh, the kc valley uh, kormangla chalagatta valley stps they sent water to kolar roughly about 220 million liters per day currently some of them also sent it to anekal that's roughly about 100 million liters per day some in the north which is raja kenal hebbal and poramau send uh, about 130 million liters per day to chikbalapur so overall about 330 million liters is going to fill the lakes of kolar chikbalapur and anekal stps with the bws is we they treating roughly about 1050 million liters per day at this current point of time but this process is not perfect many of the stps in the city are not functioning to their optimum levels and much of the sewage doesn't reach the stps because of leakage and because of lack of connectivity of drainage pipes and when treated water is actually used for the recharge of ground water in other areas things could go wrong in 2018 the koramangala chalaghatta or kc valley sewage treatment plant as it is commonly known became operational in belandur This project was started with a very clear intention. Kolar is a drought prone zone whose lakes are drying up rather fast. The idea is to recycle Bengaluru's water and redirect it to 41 lakes in Kolar so that ground water can be recharged. This water was not meant for drinking or domestic use. It was only meant as a means to recharge ground water. The farmers at Kolar complained that their crops were dying and they blamed the lakes in Kolar which received treated water from the KC Valley treatment plant. ನೋಡಿ ಈಗ ನೋಡಿ ನೀವು ಇದೆಲ್ಲ ನೋಡಿ ಈಗ ರೈತರ ಜಮೀನೆಲ್ಲ ಹಾಳಾಗಿದೆ ತೆಂಗಿನ ಮರಗಳೆಲ್ಲ ಹಾಳಾಗಿದೆ ಬೆಳೆ ಬೆಳೆಯೋಕ್ಕಾಗ್ತಾ ಇಲ್ಲ ಬೆಳೆ ಬೆಳೆದ್ರೆ ರೋಗ ವಿಪರೀತ ರೋಗ ರೈತರ ಸಮಸ್ಯೆನೇ ಕೇಳ್ತಾ ಇಲ್ಲ ದಿಸ್ ಪ್ರಾಜೆಕ್ಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ರೆಪ್ಲಿಕೇಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಹೆಬ್ಬಾಳ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ನಾಗವಾರ ವ್ಯಾಲಿ ಪ್ರಾಜೆಕ್ಟ್ ಹೂಸ್ ವಾಟರ್ ವಾಸ್ ರೀಡೈರೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಟು ಚಿಕ್ಕಬಳ್ಳಾಪುರ ಅನದರ್ ಡ್ರೌಟ್ ಪ್ರೋನ್ ರೀಜನ್ ಕ್ಲೋಸ್ ಟು ದ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಕ್ಯಾಪಿಟಲ್ again chikabalapuras farmers had the same thing to say that ever since they started using this water their crops have been dying sari neeru bartta ide idu toilet neer irbodu smell barutte idni neer nintadaga 15 disa smell illi uta madak hogala illi kutkonake agala makkalku jara baradu ee smell ke ardha jara bartta ide makkalena illi idre avrdu yen biduk munche kerigalanna shuddhikarana maadi durasti maadi bidbeku anta neemadalle ide ಆದರೆ ಯಾವುದೇ ಒಂದು ಕೆರೆ ಕೂಡ ಇದುವರೆಗೂ ದುರಸ್ತಿ ಆಗಿಲ್ಲ ಕೆರೆಗಳು ಕೊಳಚೆ ಗುಂಡಿಗಳ ಥರ ಆಗಿದೆ ಸರ್ ಈಗ ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ಅಪಾಯಕಾರಿ ಸ್ಥಿತಿ ಏನಾಗಿದೆ ಸರ್ ರೈತರಲ್ಲಿ ಭಯ ವಾತಾವರಣ ಆಗಿದೆ ಈಗ ನೀರಿಲ್ಲದ ಸ್ಥಿತಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಯಾವುದೋ ಒಂದು ನೀರು ಬರಲಿ ಅನ್ನೋ ಸ್ಥಿತಿ ಇತ್ತು ಈಗ ನೀರು ಬರ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಈ ಭಾಗದಲ್ಲಿ ವಿಷಕಾರಿ ನೀರು ಬರ್ತಾ ಇರೋದ್ರಿಂದ ನಮ್ಮ ತರಕಾರಿಗಳಿಗೆ ಮಾರ್ಕೆಟ್ಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ದರ ಕುಸಿತ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಹಾಲಿಗೆ ಸಮಸ್ಯೆ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಅಂತ ಒಂದು ಆತಂಕಕಾರಿ ಬೆಳವಣಿಗೆ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ನಾನು ರಿಪೋರ್ಟ್ ಕೊಟ್ಟಾಗ ನಾನು ಕೆಲವೊಂದು ಕನ್ಸರ್ನ್ ರೈಸ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ದೆ ಒಂದು ಭಾರಿ ಲೋದ ಅಂಶ ಈ ನೀರಿನಲ್ಲಿದೆ ಅದನ್ನು ತೆಗಿಬೇಕು ಮತ್ತು ನ್ಯೂಟ್ರಿಯಂಟ್ ಎನ್ ಆ್ಯನ್ ಪಿ ಸಿ ಎನ್ ಆ್ಯನ್ ಪಿ ಹ್ಯಾಕ್ ಬರುತ್ತೆ ಅಂದರೆ ಸುವೇಜಲ್ಲಿ ನಾವೆಲ್ಲರೂ ಪ್ರೋಟೀನ್ ತೊಗೊಳ್ತೇವೆ ಮತ್ತು ಕ್ಲಾತನ್ನು ಡಿಟರ್ಜೆಂಟಿಂದ ವಾಶ್ ಮಾಡ್ತೇವೆ ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ಪ್ರೋಟೀನ್ ತೊಗೊಂಡಾಗ ಎನ್ ಬಂದೇ ಸಾರ್ವಜನಕ ಪಿ ಫಾಸ್ಫರಸ್ ರಂಜಕ ಬಂದೇ ಬರುತ್ತೆ ಅದನ್ನು ತೆಗಿಬೇಕು ಅಂಥೇಳಿ ನಾನು ಹೇಳಿದ್ದೆ ಸಿ ನೀ ನೀರಿನಲ್ಲಿ ನೈಟ್ರೋಜನ್ ಇದು ಇದ್ದಾಗ ಅದು ಬೋರ್ವೆಲ್ ಹರಿದು ಹೋದಾಗ ಆಕ್ಸಿಡೈಸೇಷನ್ ಆಗಿ ನೈಟ್ರೇಟ್ ಆಗಿ ಪರಿವರ್ತನೆ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ನೈಟ್ರ
In January 2024, Minor Irrigation Minister N S Pos Raju announced that this water was not meant for agricultural use and that action would be taken against those who used it for their crops. He also stated that officials were to conduct inspections to make sure that this water is not used for agriculture. Farmers still aren't happy. They want water that can be used for farming without any worry that they'd lose their yield. But this water is not going to fulfill their needs. Besides the government operated STPs come the private STPs. Until this month there was a government mandate that all apartment complexes which had more than 20 housing units had to have a sewage treatment plant on their premises. This mandate was criticized because old apartments that didn't have enough space were also required to run and operate STPs. This simply couldn't be done. In March this year the government lifted this mandate. According to the new rule, apartment complexes that had up to 120 housing units and were close to a sewer line that leads to the closest government operated STP are not required to set up one of their own. Recycled water is meant to be used for commercial, industrial and construction purposes so that fresh water and borewell water can be used for domestic purposes. ಈಗಾಗಲೇ ಕನ್ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಷನ್ ಇಂಡಸ್ಟ್ರೀಸ್ ಕಡೆಯಿಂದ ಮುನ್ನೂರ ಮೂವತ್ತಾರು ಬೋರ್ವೆಲ್ಗಳನ್ನು ನಾವು ತೊಗೊಂಡಿದ್ದೇವೆ ಅವರಿಗೆ ಮರುಬಳಕೆ ನೀರನ್ನು ಕೊಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೀವಿ ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ಈಗ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟು ಕಮರ್ಷಿಯಲ್ ಮತ್ತು ಇಂಡಸ್ಟ್ರಿಯಲ್ ಅವ್ರಿಗೆ ಕೂಡ ಮರುಬಳಕೆ ನೀರಿಗೆ ಒತ್ತಾಯ ಮಾಡಿದ್ದೀವಿ ಆದಷ್ಟು ನಮ್ಮಲ್ಲಿ ತೌಸಂಡ್ ತ್ರೀ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಮಿಲಿಯನ್ ಲೀಟರ್ಸು ಮರುಬಳಕೆ ನೀರು ಅವಶ್ಯ ಇರೋದ್ರಿಂದ ಲಭ್ಯ ಇರೋದ್ರಿಂದ ನಮ್ದು ಏನು ಕೊರತೆ ಇದೆ ಕೇವಲ ಫೈವ್ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಮಿಲಿಯನ್ ಲೀಟರ್ಸ್ ಇದೆ ಎಲ್ಲೆಲ್ಲಿ ಮರುಬಳಕೆ ನೀರನ್ನು ಸಂಸ್ಕೃತ ನೀರನ್ನು ಪರಿಸರ ಸ್ನೇಹಿ ನೀರನ್ನು ನಾವು ಉಪಯೋಗಿಸ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೀವಿ ಅಲ್ಲೆಲ್ಲ ಉಪಯೋಗಿಸ್ಬಿಟ್ಟಿದ್ರೆ ನಮ್ಮದು ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ಸಾಲ್ವ್ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ಅಂತ ನಂಬ್ತಿದ್ದೀವಿ ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ಒಟ್ಟಾರೆ ಜಲಮಂಡಲಿ ವತಿಯಿಂದ ಅಂದರ ಜಲ ಮಟ್ಟವನ್ನು ಹೆಚ್ಚು ಮಾಡೋದು ಮತ್ತು ಪರಿಸರ ಜಲ ಸ್ನೇಹಿ ನೀರನ್ನು ಉಪಯೋಗಿಸೋದು ಜಾಸ್ತಿ ಮಾಡೋದು ಮತ್ತು ಮುಖ್ಯವಾಗಿ ನೀರು ಏನು ಉಳಿ ವೇಸ್ಟ್ ಆಗ್ತದೆ ಕುಡಿಯುವ ನೀರನ್ನು ಪೋಲ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇರ್ತಾರೆ ಕೈ ತುಳಿಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಕಾಲು ತುಳಿಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಆಮೇಲೆ ಸ್ವಚ್ಛತೆ ಮಾಡೋಕ್ಕೆ ಅದನ್ನು ನಾವು ಕಂಟ್ರೋಲ್ ಮಾಡಿದರೆ ಆದಷ್ಟು ನಮ್ಮ ಏನು ಸಮಸ್ಯೆಗಳು ಉತ್ಪಾದನೆ ಆಗಿದೆ ಅದನ್ನು ಸರಿ ಮಾಡಬಹುದು ಅಂತ ನಾವು ಕ್ರಮ ತಗೊಳ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೀವಿ ಆಲ್ದೋ ವೇ ಕರೆಂಟ್ಲಿ ಇನ್ ಅ ವಾಟರ್ ಕ್ರೈಸಿಸ್ ಕಮ್ ಮಾನ್ಸೂನ್ ಹೆವಿ ರೇನ್ಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ಕಾಸ್ ವಾಟರ್ ಲಾಗಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಫ್ಲಡ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಸೆವರಲ್ ಏರಿಯಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸಿಟಿ ನ್ಯೂಟ್ರಲೈಸಿಂಗ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಶ್ಯೂ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಬ್ಯಾಲೆನ್ಸಿಂಗ್ ಆರ್ ನೀಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ವಾಟರ್ ವಿತ್ ಅ ಸಪ್ಲೈ ಅವೈಲೇಬಲ್ ಟು ಅಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಲಾಂಗ್ ಪ್ರೋಸೆಸ್ ಇಟ್ ವುಡ್ ನೀಡ್ ದ ಸಿಟಿ ಟು ಫೈಂಡ್ ವಾಟರ್ ರೀಚಾರ್ಜಿಂಗ್ ಸೊಲ್ಯೂಷನ್ ದಟ್ ಆರ್ ಸೂಟೆಡ್ ಟು ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಸಾಯಿಲ್ ಕಂಡೀಷನ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ವುಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಮೀನ್ ರಿವೈವಿಂಗ್ ಲೇಕ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ದ ಸಿಟಿ ಇಸ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಸಫಿಷಿಯಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ವಾಟರ್ ನೀಡ್ಸ್ ವನ್ಸ್ ಮೋರ್ ಬಟ್ ಅಂಟಲ್ ವಿ ಫೈಂಡ್ ಸಸ್ಟೇನೇಬಲ್ ಸೊಲ್ಯೂಷನ್ಸ್ ಟು ದಿಸ್ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ವಿ ಆಸ್ ಸಿಟಿಸನ್ಸ್ ನೀಡ್ ಟು ಡೂ ಎವ್ರಿ ಬಿಟ್ ವಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಟು ಯೂಸ್ ಆರ್ ರಿಸೋರ್ಸಸ್ ಜುಡಿಷಿಯಲಿ Do you live in an area where there are separate pipes for treated water? Does your apartment complex use treated water? What do you use it for? Make sure to comment down below and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. With camera persons Karthik Govardhan and Prashant S, this is Rukmini Ravishankar for Deccan Herald.